I'm Marion McHugh from the Portland Phoenix, and this is the November edition of Portland Rising, our monthly news, interview, and arts program produced by the Portland Phoenix in conjunction with our friends at the Portland Media Center. Tonight, we're exploring the issues surrounding the old port, past, present, and future. And we have with us Dean Cole from D. Cole Jewelers, as well as Carrie Tyson, the executive director of the Portland Downtown District. Some of us are old enough to remember when Portland down, Portland's downtown with Congress Street had many department stores, Porches, Mitchell and Braun, Benoit's, the streets were thronged with shoppers. This was Back many, many years ago, the old port at that point was not developed and redeveloped the way it was in the 70s. And since then, there have been many changes in Portland and the downtown, as well as the old port. So we're going to hear about those tonight. Dean, can you tell us what it was like in the early day when you first started your store, on, I think on Exchange Street at that time? Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the area was pretty well developed. There was still plenty of uh, buildings that were vacant, run down, windows broke, you know, but by the time we uh, opened in 1980, it was, it was getting along in pretty good shape, but there were still buildings you could get at a really good price if you were willing to step in and develop. Um, yeah. So you've been at your same location at Exchange Street that you're at now? For since 1980. Since 1980, yeah. last June we celebrated 40 years. Wow! Yeah. Wow! So you must be one of the longest uh, remaining businesses on the, Exchange Street. The, uh, mm -hmm. In the old port um, at retail, there's Joseph's, the clothier, mm -hmm. and us. Mm -hmm. We're the two oldest. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he out he dates us by uh, quite a few years. He's been right. there, you know, I think right. 45. Right. So what are some of the changes you've seen since 1980? How does it, you know, what are the good parts, the bad parts, things well, you worry about? Rents have certainly uh, increased <laughs> dramatically. Right. Um, we've, uh, we've seen it, it was a pretty rough area back then. You know, uh, right. we would get our store broken into, you know, right. on a, you know, at least every four or five months someone would smash a window and come inside and break it up and haul stuff off and wow. uh, yeah it was it was it was not like it is now and we haven't had an incident in a while so it's, it's mm -hmm. it just seems a lot it's a lot calmer area so. so what but you had faith and you stayed even though Oh, you yeah. know, you had those challenges at the yeah. beginning, and you could have gone to the suburbs, and yeah. you know, why did why didn't you? We like the area, you know. Just it's it's the old port. It's uh, you know, there's so much going on, and it's, it's alive, and it's just it's where we wanted to be, you know. Right, right, right. Carrie, tell us tell us about what the the Portland Downtown District is doing, and I know you've been working on lots of issues going on, and you've had some success. I know there's going to be, I think the council has just appropriated some money for some new uh, bathrooms that will be downtown that will be very welcome, and I'm sure you're working on other things. Can you tell us about that? Sure, happy to, and thanks again for having me on. Uh, we're 
at Portland Downtown, we're nearing our 30th anniversary. Our mission is to stimulate a thriving, vibrant, and sustainable downtown community. So we've been hard at work on that for, like I said, 30 years. And yeah, we're uh, in the midst of all sorts of projects, even though the world is a little bit abnormal. Uh, including, uh, as you mentioned, uh, advocacy for public restrooms. Uh, Monday night, the city council did dedicate $600,000 of American Rescue Plan Act uh, for public restrooms. Uh, those won't strictly be just downtown, but uh, I think some of them will end up downtown. And so we're going to end up working on uh, exactly where, exactly how, exactly what kinds of restrooms there will be. There's lots of different ideas in the mix and uh, it's a long time coming. Uh, there's been a need for that. And we're mindful that it's both a need in the Old Port and the Arts and Government District, which is both places that we work. Uh, we're doing lots of other things as well. Here we are nearing the holiday time. So we've just published um, our request for what we're calling our Merry Madness Passport, which is a month long shopping event uh, throughout downtown. We've got over 70 participants. They're going to have discounts in all sorts of stores. We're printing about 3,000 of them this year. That's about double than what we did last year. We've already had uh, over 1,200 requests in about two days, so that's really good for us. Uh, so that's an exciting upcoming event that we hope will help uh, commerce uh, downtown. It's It's got QR codes that will direct you direct to websites and that sort of thing. So as the uh, coronavirus and the Delta variant is still here, if people don't want to get out, they can shop directly from their, uh, you know, their their lounger or their couch uh, at downtown small independent businesses and lots of other going on as well. But let me mention just a couple of other things as I know you have lots of guests. Uh, our Monument Square tree cam will be going live later in the month as well. And that was such a popular activity that we did last year. It shows the tree to anybody in the world that's in Monument Square that want to see these incredible Portland these incredible New England holidays. We really uh, get a lot of hits, particularly when the snow falls. We do a lot of social and other promotions on that. We try to show people how they can cast it directly to their smart TVs and set in their home anywhere in the world and see downtown Portland, Maine. And truly, it's anywhere in the world. Last year, we had uh, inquiries and responses from people all across the world, Russia, England, Eastern Europe, Australia, New Zealand, the list goes on. So, I mean, what an extraordinarily popular thing. Um, so those are things that are coming and a lot more, of course. It all sounds great. So with this season coming up, even when we talk about the supply chain problems, there's a lot of things that we'll be doing that we can do locally even if we're not going into the stores to enjoy Portland's downtown and the old port. Absolutely. Yeah. All, one of the, there aren't many good things about the, uh, the pandemic, but one of the good things is we've seen a lot of our downtown small independent businesses really build up their website uh, presence. Uh, they've recognized that they've had to provide the, the alternative uh, ways for people to get their products. So, the vast majority of our, our downtown businesses have uh, an, uh, a good and solid website that you can shop from. And, and in ca some cases, you know, you can uh, go to their social channels, which oftentimes these days provide a shopping opportunity as well. And that's something else that's really been lifted up during the pandemic because folks have had to uh, all, uh, adjust the way they've advertised. So not many good things about it, but, but those are a couple of them. You know, the other one is we saw tons and tons of outdoor uh, options. Uh, which has really led to a new vibrancy downtown. You know, the limit before the pandemic was about five outdoor eating spaces in the entire city. Now, at, at its height, we had about 67, I think, uh, outdoor eating spaces. Those are slowly going away as the weather turns cold. Uh, and, and, but, you know, it was really uh, it brings another level of life to downtown. Yep. Carrie, the, the pandemic, as you mentioned, has, has brought many challenges and a lot of the, the outdoor dining and the 
parking that has been removed has also brought a kind of specific challenge for some of the other businesses down there. Um, have you have you heard a lot about that, or do you think that's manageable, or do you think that's going to get better as 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 some of these restaurants, as you mentioned, probably won't continue in the very cold weather to be to be serving outside? We, you know, that's one of the things we hear and talk about all all the time. And what I always remind people is that it's hard to find parking in a great place. Uh, and, you know, that is what we have in downtown Portland, a great place. You know, that's what if you don't have a parking problem, then you have a parking problem. You know, it's 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 too much parking a lot of times. So there's something like 15 to 17,000 parking spaces in downtown, depending upon how you define it. Uh, you know, it's um, we have this mindset of that we want to park directly in front of places. Uh, so, you know, there's there's plenty of parking uh, uh, available. It's been more so even in the pandemic as people are not working in the office as much. Uh, so that's really not been something we've talked as much about other than we, you know, arguably have too much of it, um, you know, and lots of other ways to, to manage it through education, information, signage, multimodal transportation. Uh, but yeah, those, those outdoor dining spots are slowly uh, dissipating, at least for the season. Uh, though I think we, one thing we saw last year with the, the bubbles and the tents and these sort of things is that Mainers and their visitors are hardy folk and they like to be outside uh, in, the, in the cold weather. They're, they're not too much uh, scares them off, though, you know, maybe they don't necessarily want uh, a four star meal uh, that's going to be cold in about three minutes but they might be willing to enjoy some warm or tasty beverages or, or, you know, or something like that while they're sitting outside. Dean, what has the parking issue, is that something you think about or try and I know if I'm going to Exchange Street, I, I have a struggle sometimes because I can't walk that far and, you know, to try and, is that something that you're aware of or you, you think is a problem for the downtown, for your store? It's definitely a problem. I mean, you know, it's when, when people come from away and they can't find parking, you know, I know that it, it is, there is more spaces available now during the pandemic, but just before the pandemic, I mean, every spot, we were on lists to, uh, to get employee parking and we were on a three year waiting list. Yeah, and uh, it's eased up now, but there is a real problem with finding spaces, but. Is there anything the city could be doing better to kind of open up parking for you? Well, I know that there was, a, there was a move in the city to eliminate spaces because, you know, less spaces, less cars, less congestion, but it, uh, it really, um, people need their automobiles. It's, you know, it's just, it just doesn't work that way. Well, we're kind of stuck in Portland because we we live in a state in a place where we're in our automobiles and there's no, and the public transportation is not right. a very good option if you're coming in from Falmouth or outside to to get in town and do some shopping. Right. Um, and that's that's a challenge, I think. It, it's, it's challenging, yeah. I have had customers say, you know, can't come down because of the issues with parking, but... Yeah. Basically, people want to get in, they figure a way, you know. Right, yeah. right, right. I'm wondering um, what the relationship is, and, and maybe the sort of an artificial disti distinction carry between the, the issues that face the downtown part of the city and Congress Street and the very urban downtown versus the old port. That I, I don't know if that's a distinction without a difference or if they're kind of mutually dependent. I mean, certainly great businesses like Longfellow Books are kind of part of part of uh, each each place. And I'm wondering if you, Carrie, if, how you define your role. I mean, obviously you're taking in also the old port, but if if there's a different response and strategy to the downtown versus you know the old port in terms of issues you're dealing with. Yeah, it, you know, we work in both of those areas, the old port and the arts and government district, and, and, and it's both different and the same. 
uh, you know, some of the challenges it's, and it depends upon the time of the year, you know, the, when we, when in the days when we had cruise ships and these sorts of things, and we still had lots of bus tours and the like, uh, even more so perhaps during the pandemic, because people weren't able to travel overseas. So, you know, they adjusted their schedules and came to places like Portland, Maine, which are truly a, a national draw. Uh, you know, so we try to, you know, engage people to get to all across downtown. But, you know, there is these sort of natural barriers that we as humans adjust to negative space and things like uh, surface parking, large surface parking lots, or as we often call them in urban place management, parking craters. You know, as a human, we just it's sort of uh, we default to turning around. We kind of automatically think that nothing is happening, even though sometimes there's a gap and then it gets very active again. So, you know, you've seen us uh, or, or those who have, uh, have been paying attention in the last couple of years. We put up a lot of signage downtown. Uh, we see a lot of vibrancy. Again, that downtown outdoor space uh, or that outdoor eating has really uh, helped engage folks. Uh, but it is a little bit of two different places that sometimes the tourists only think about the old port. So it's we have to encourage them to, to, to move beyond that. Uh, and we've got a variety of different tools to do that, you know, including but not limited to maps. And uh, there, you know, a lot of the tour guides that are uh, downtown, they sort of take you all around so that they you can familiarize yourself with other parts that sort of aren't the default, uh, but, but it, is, it, is a, it is something that we're constantly working on. Yeah. Um, well, there, there, there's big new developments coming online. Um, there's, all, of course, the, a, huge, a huge residential building being built right at, the, at downtown uh, on Congress Street, and the, the biggest, I think the tallest building in Maine that's being built, and of course, the Portland Foreside development on the uh, at the ed, on the East End that we've written about in the Phoenix this week, and they they want to kind of draw from the old port, they say, but not detract from the old port. So, I'm wondering, um, you know, if you have thoughts of that or how. I mean, that's going to take a long time to build out, but uh, there's certainly a lot of building going on, and there's. And there's been a lot of building, of course, uh, and condo development right above Ocean Gateway in that area, and um, still a lot of things happening. Yeah, for us, it's an exciting time. We're excited about that uh, new development down in what they're calling Portland Foreside. We think it'll only enhance uh, the downtown. It's technically not in the improvement district, which is where we work, but you know, we all also recognize we don't work in a vacuum. So we think these things can work uh, together and be good partners. Good, you know, any development like that that's happening is good for the city. We think. Uh, so we're excited about it. We're also excited about that 18 story building. Uh, it's going to be largely housing, which is such a need, not just downtown, but, you know, throughout Maine, really, for that matter. So that is a, a very exciting. I, I, I know there's a new book just to give a comparison uh, published on of uh, photography of Portland in the 70s by a gentleman named John Duncan I saw the other day. And, you know, I was looking at those photos and thinking about how things have changed. And that's a thing they're always doing. You know, back then, down the downtown, the old port, uh, the, the art, now arts and government district was perhaps not uh, the, the, the place it is now. Uh, so uh, we like to see that exciting. When we see housing, we see people that are going to need services. They're going to be buying jewelry. They're going to be buying groceries. They're going to be, uh, you know, buying coffee, all that sort of thing. So it's an exciting time uh, for, for those developments. Uh, so so we're, we're, we're glad to see it. And forgive me, I'm sorry, I have a heart out at 1030, but thank you. I have to get to another meeting. Thank you so much, Carrie. Thank you. Um, what, one thing I'm wondering, and we will be closing out soon. There's, as as there always is, as you mentioned when you're when you started downtown uh, on Exchange Street, um, there you you were dealing with some street crime and uh, break-ins and things like that, and that's still happening. It's happened on Congress Street. I don't know if it's recently, within the last few weeks. I don't know if it's happened on on exchange mm -hmm. recently, or is that something that you, 
the security, the safety of your shoppers. I think someone was mentioning that you used to be open very late in the evenings, but I guess I guess you're not. The stores down down there in the Elbert are not open late these days. But yeah, I think that has a lot less to do with crime than just just uh, general business practice. Uh, you know, um, we trying to manage staff and right. and Lack you know help. have a decent life and right. you know it's, those right. long hours right. can okay. be right. grueling you know right yeah sure. but what you know portland i mean i've seen it in my short amount of time here it was a you know it was a gritty little fishing mill town right, right. not that long ago i mean uh, no. the ground fishermen would pull their nets right up on right, right. Uh, commercial street and do net repairs and there was uh, freight trains right on commercial. We had a, a Crosby Laughlin, they, Laughlin, I think it was. They had a foundry right out there, and and uh, that rang, you know, 24/7. And it was a, uh, it was a different city back then, and the crime was a little more gritty and just not like it is now. It's wonderful. I remember. Now. I mean, yeah, you, yeah. If you, I if you you go back there, it's uh, yeah. it, it's and it's not like that anymore. I mean, it's safe and you know, it's a great little area. It's really an amazing transition to happen to over a, city, a short period of time. Uh, you know, yeah. in my lifetime, which yeah. is pretty long. But but uh, I want to thank you, Dean, for being with us tonight. This was this was very informative and yeah. interesting. Cool. Want to thank Carrie for discovering many, many issues that are going, that have been going on and are important to the, to the future of Portland's downtown at Old Port. And I want to thank, thank our viewers for joining us this month on Portland Rising. And please join us next month for another edition of Portland Rising. Thank you.